Tamson. <laughs> That's for a cute Australian girl I know. Yo, what is up? My name is Ryan, but a lot more people know me as Shooky, and this is the perfect lineup video for the Los Angeles Lakers. The guy we're going up against today is 97 and 9 and 26 and 1 with the Clippers. And if that isn't enough to convince you this is going to be a good game, I gave this kid a 17 point lead just to make things a little more interesting. Well, technically, I didn't really give him the 17-point lead. He blew me out in the first quarter when he hit these six three-pointers on me. Now, in my opinion, the Lakers are hands down the most fun team to use in NBA 2K13, strictly because of, you guessed it, Kobe Bryant. His jump shot and his ability to score is second to none in this game and makes the Lakers the first team I choose when playing online these days. These couple plays right here are just my first quarter highlights, even though everyone else in the Lakers blows, which you'll see here in just a second after this nice pump fake from Steve Nash. I just couldn't get anything rolling with him or Jody Meeks all game, no matter how solid my timing was. Everyone on the Lakers is just so inconsistent, and it gets really frustrating playing with them on offense. They are absolutely horrible on defense, too. Their rotations are mad slow, and you can get burned from outside if you're not active on the, with the power forward on defense. Right here is where I turn this, the tides, though. Kobe misses that jump shot, and I start to get a little frustrated. He presses start on accident, presumably right here, and when he unpauses it, I flash the start menu back at him as a little jab, and then he presses it back at me, and that was his first mistake one thing you don't want to do with me is let me get in your head and the second thing you really don't want to do with me is make me mad because after a few more pauses he goes to the scoreboard and tries to rub it in my face that he's up by 14 points I respond back to him by showing him that he's all of the all of the threes he's made against me and then all of the, the threes I've missed against him and that's why I'm down and then I flash the quit thing to him because I think I'm trying to make him think that I'm gonna make him quit things are about to get really intense back to the Lakers really quick though even though they can be inconsistent if you know how to use Kobe then you should be all set I would just recommend never trying to beat the heat or the thunder with the Lakers because the perimeter defense is just a little bit too good otherwise teams like the Clippers and the Knicks and every other team out there have a problem containing the most lethal 34-year-old athlete on the planet right now. I mean, look what he did at Portland last night. 47 points and never sat on the bench for a second. So here we go. He knocks down this three right here with Chris Paul and goes up by 17 points with roughly 12 and a half minutes left in the game. And now I'm really mad. And it doesn't help that Jody Meeks is about to blow this wide open three-pointer either. But now I'm focused and in that same mindset Kobe gets in when he's about to fuck shit up. You know what I'm talking about? When he starts burying his bottom teeth in, the, in his bottom bottom jaw yeah that look because after Dwight Howard gets this rebound and outlets it to Kobe Bryant on the fast break I'm about to go Mark Jackson on Jamal Crawford with this dribble pull up because hand down man down <laughs> and this next three he hits is the exact reason why the Clippers are so lethal their releases Karan Butler is shooting roughly 38% from outside this season and only 33% for his career, but that doesn't matter at all because he is absolute fucking money in 2K13. He doesn't miss a single three at all in this game. Jamal Crawford, Chris Paul, and Karan Butler have some of the easiest releases in 2K13, and they're all on the same team. That plays a big hand in why they're so dominant in this game. They're solid players on a good team with easy releases. It's a little bit of a joke, to be honest with you. So here we go. We're kicking off the second half half only down by 12 now Kobe starts it off lighting up or start Kobe starts lighting it up and will catch fire soon but starts off with a cool a plus right here even though I did release it a tad bit early I think now after Kobe hits this jump shot my next defensive possession was my entire first half frustration in a nutshell I play excellent defense right here and he gets bailed out with a tenth of a second left on the shot clock because of some Blake Griffin cheese I do an excellent job cutting off of all of the passing lanes and not allowing any open looks and with three seconds left on the clock Jody Meeks almost gets a steal but Will Green picks it up off the floor and somehow tosses it to Blake Griffin who just trucks through Dwight Howard like he's a ninth grade linebacker he spends about four and a half hours showing me the replay so we're just gonna skip through that <laughs> And now Kobe is getting mad and starts playing crazy on defense, too. He gets a monster steal right here, which leads to a dirty dribble pull-up from Steve Mash right in Eric Bledsoe's eyeball. <laughs> now, the lead is in the single digits for the first time since the first quarter. He calls a timeout right here coming up, and even though he's probably feeling pretty comfortable, I'm starting to let bad thoughts creep into the back of his mind. 
Dwight Howard right here is about to deny this quick little entry pass to Blake Griffin. He's about to shit his pants because after Kobe picks it up and kicks it up to Jody Meeks for an easy two-point jump shot, we're going to play a solid possession defensively until Chris Paul dribbles a little bit too deep in the paint and tries to kick it back out to Grant Hill. And Jody Meeks gets another deflection, except this time he actually secures the ball, and with two seconds left on the clock, he kicks it up to Steve Nash, who pulls up right before the buzzer like he still plays for the Suns, and knocks down the clutch three to make it a one-possession game. So finally, Meeks and Nash are making up a little bit for completely letting me down in the first half. We start off this final quarter of this game with a score of 50-47. to 47. We're only down by three now. Kobe kicks off things with a Dirty move on Chris Paul and gets pretty deep into the paint. And I hit Karan Butler with a little push off fadeaway that Kobe never misses down there. And we cut the lead to one. Dwight Howard is about to get a monster block now, but is going to get called for a foul. But I want to take a quick second to give you a small tip. The other reason I like to have my best shooter at the power forward position is because just like that buzzer beater that Nash just hit, whenever I know I'm about to get a steal, I leak out with that defender and I can usually get a wide open look like I did to close that last quarter. So DeAndre hits this first free throw but is about to miss this one and after Kobe gives me a solid box out and grabs the rebound I realize it's the fourth quarter for the Black Mamba and you already know that means I'm pulling up from right here buckets <laughs> I've come back 18 points and regained the lead but it isn't over yet I take this opportunity to make him really worried and remind him that I'm going to make him quit Every possession is going to be key from, key from here on out, so even a slight mental advantage might force him to make a, a bad decision. I almost get another steal after Chris Paul hands it up to Karan Butler and he dribbles into Kobe, but after Blake picks it up, I follow him and remind him of that. He takes the ball out of bounds now, and now it's Nash's turn to be the snake in the grass. I see that he's controlling Jamal Crawford and slide it in front of him at the last second to steal the ball, and Kobe kicks it up to Jody, who slams it home to give me a three-point lead now. Now, a little bit later, and with a four Four point lead Blake Griffin Blake Griffin tries to kick it out to DeAndre Jordan but the ball gets deflected and Jody Meeks picks it up and passes it to Kobe buckets again we've got a seven point lead now a monster 24 point comeback but it still isn't over yet because a little bit later when I'm trying to milk the clock down for with a five point lead the bullshit strikes again Steve Nash blows a wide open a rated jump shot and then Kobe blows a wide open uncontested B plus rated three and with a little over a minute left in the game I hear Chris moves lob city music <laughs> and Blake Griffin cuts the lead to three again 2k just gave me the middle finger 30 seconds later Dwight Howard gets sent to the line for two free throws and I wouldn't have it any other way a clutch situation with a shitty free throw shooter to make it a two possession game he lets go and the first one rattles in a four point lead I really don't want to get Dwight Howard on uh, a foul again so I need to make this one he lines it up and sinks it <laughs> but it's still not over yet because the Clippers have the greatest three point shooter of all time on their team Karan Butler. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he is 5 for 5 from downtown, and we now have a one-possession game on our hands and over 24 seconds left on the clock, so they're going to get the ball back. It's time for the second greatest player of all time to seal the deal. Look at how thirsty Chris Paul and Karan Butler are for this deal. It looks like a soft double team, but Kobe isn't letting the ball leave his hands unless he's shooting it. And here he goes. Hits Jamal Crawford with a crossover, and... Kobe fucking Bryant, an A-plus to win the game. I make him quit just like I promised him I would when he was winning by 17 points. <laughs> so two things before I go really quick. The first one is what the Lakers starting lineup and bench should look like. Um, most of you guys are pretty smart and probably figured it out by now anyway just from watching the defense. But just in case you haven't, you want Jody Meeks at the point guard, Earl Clark at the shooting guard, Kobe Bryant at the small forward, Steve Nash at the power forward spot so he can play in the middle of that zone, and Dwight Howard at the center. Your second team should only play two minutes all game, and that's the last two minutes of the first quarter and the first minute of the second quarter. You don't want them to play at all in the second half because they are absolutely horrendous. Make sure you use all of your timeouts when playing with the Lakers. I usually call three timeouts in a row when there's about a minute left in the third and then two more in the fourth quarter before it hits two minutes left in the game. And now pay attention. This is really important. You have seven timeouts per game, but you can only call or you can only go into the fourth quarter with four timeouts total. So if you don't use them, you will lose them. And you can only go into the last two minutes of the game with two timeouts total. So make sure you use three before the 
the fourth quarter and two before the last two minutes, all right? Last thing I got for you guys is a little surprise. One of the vets of our 2K community here is my dude, Kit Kat, and he's got some insane handles and some funny videos on his channel, so make sure you check out his stuff by using the annotation on the screen right now. One other thing you should check out is some awesome content from my boy John here, who is an, also a part of our community and who just directed this amazing short action film called Remain, starring this super cute girl named Maria. So click on that annotation if you'd like to watch that as well. I know the clips are kind of screwed up. Unfortunately, I couldn't fix them. But besides that, subscribe if you haven't already and expect a lot more videos very soon. Peace.